right here with Von Mason from Von Mason Crew, the song called Bounce, Rock, Skate, Roll. Thank you for getting it right. And you had to have your roller skates on to be, uh, you know, listening to that song. Back in the days, people had their Walkman, Walkman right? They was over there in uh, Central Park in New York. Oh, you're in New York. Right? Well, I'm from Oakland. Oh, that's So we're enough. going around Lake Merritt, <laughs> okay. and uh, we're listening to Bounce, Rock, Roll. Skate, Roll. Uh, Sk yeah, all of those. Yeah, all of those. <laughs> So, Vaughn Mason, how you doing, man? I'm doing great. As long as I'm breathing air, I mean, Prince is, I was the opening act when Prince came out. I was the opening act, and Rick James was the headliner, and both those guys are dead. So, I am very blessed, G-Spot. That's right. You are still here doing it, man. And, of course, people remember you on stage with the snake. You had a uh, python? Or... Uh, yeah, the reticulated python. Yeah, I called her monster, but, you know, she was a good snake. I mean, you just have to know how to deal with snakes, you know, feed them. That's what it's like, lions and tigers, you feed them. So that was this worked out fine, but I used that as my uh, memorabilia because I didn't take up dancing and all that. I just scared people by using the real snake. Then I got a rubber snake out of the box that they saw me take the real snake out of. Took the rubber snake with the real snake around my neck and made like that rubber snake bit me in the face. And I threw it in the audience. I don't care how well your lady was dressed or how well you were dressed. You were running over those people trying to get away from that thing. So it worked out like a charm. You still remember it after all these years. That's right. And that was unique for a funk 1980. show. 1980. Right, because we had groups like Cameo, uh, we had so many other funk groups, Bootsy Collins was out there, and, and you had this snake. Yeah. And how did, how did, like when you were doing bounce rock, skate roll, uh, how did you bring that, how did that snake make an entrance? I mean, like, I, well, how did I think of you doing did, it? You, you had wrapped it around your neck, you walked. No, 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 what I did was, well, I used to be this, okay, I used to be, the, I'll take you back. I used to be the sound company for BT Express. Do it to your satisfied, whatever it is. And I went out on tour with them and they traveled all over the world and they were very boring. Nothing against them, they just weren't very visual. And I said, if you guys keep doing this, you're gonna play 50 states and then that's the end. So they said, well, why don't you go come in the act? So I had to think of something to do. They only let me go on one song and I couldn't, I couldn't talk on the mic or anything, but I could dance. So I came out there and I, I, I said, let me get a retic I, I got a snake and started working with the snake and did all the things, put the head in the mouth and, and that, it actually got them a record deal with Columbia Records when we played uh, the Hempstead uh, uh, Coliseum in Hempstead, New York. And Columbia Records had heard about me with them and I was like the black Alice Cooper because Alice Cooper was doing that in the rock stuff. So they didn't tell me that because they didn't want to have to pay me as a member of the group. They told me like four years later, but that was how that occurred. And then when I went on my own in 1980, um, I just kept the act and used it in my act. Now tell me what that song did for you. It changed your life. It took you all around the world. Uh, some of the highlights uh, behind Rock's Gate Roll. Okay. Um, yeah, I was working in a stereo store in Manhattan, uh, a couple of blocks up the street from the World Trade Center uh, on Trinity Place at a stereo store, which I didn't know was a front for cocaine, but it absolutely was. I didn't know that, and I found out later. But anyway, that's another story. That's a true story. That's a true story, I'm telling you the truth. So um, doing that, I said, well, let me write a song. Uh, I would go to clubs like Leviticus and uh, the, the Latin Palace and all that in New York City, and I would see people go crazy over these songs, and it was just drums, bass, guitar, uh, some kind of lead, and a vocal. I'm like, these people are losing their minds over this, and especially like the Donna Summer song, Love to Love You Baby. I mean, there's not much to that song, but people go crazy. So I said, damn, well, it, it's not rocket science. So uh, a, friend, a friend of mine, uh, and I've, I've always been in a recording engineer. That's what I am by trade. And um, so what happened was I read in the Wall Street Journal because a friend of mine had just graduated from the Wharton School of Business in, in Philadelphia. He said, why don't you start playing penny stocks? I wasn't playing anything. I was making $125 a week at this stereo store on Trinity Place, right? Living on my friend's sofa in Brooklyn. And uh, I read on the cover of Wall Street Journal. To this day, it's a little piece that says, what's news? Uh, it said something about roller skating. So I turned to that page and they said they were selling 300,000 pairs of roller skates a month. I said, there's no way I can go wrong writing a song about 
roller skating. Uh, I, forget me roller skating, I'm not trying to fall and all that. I'm not a real good skater. I can skate forward, but I'm not, not going to do anything fancy. And I ended up taking Good Times by Chic apart. And when they sang the, their verses, I sang my verses. When they dropped it down, I dropped it down. When they broke it down to drums and bass, I dropped the song to drums and bass. And I learned their bass line that don't, 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 don't. So I learned that with two fingers because I'm not, I'm, I'm not a musician. That's what's so crazy. I can only play my songs on the bass guitar because I'm not trying to be a musician. You have to practice. I want to play. Practice to me was never fun. So I want to always have fun. So I put the song together, went down to a, 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 a studio in DC that I used to work at and had a friend of mine who worked there as an engineer after I left and said, listen, I need to come on the graveyard shift on the down low you play the keyboard, get me a lead vocalist, the guitar player, and a bongo player, and I'm bringing the drummer. And I paid everybody $75 and gave them first right of refusal to go on tour. Only the lead singer took me up on it, and he was, his name was Jerome Bell, and unfortunately he passed away. Um, but I made the song, put it out on acetate, which is like $25 plates. It's the first step in making a real vinyl record. and. Any DJ that I gave it to, and I only made like five of them because I was only making 125 bucks a week. So any DJ that played in a club, in, in a big club in New York City, I gave them one of those plates. And if they played it, then I let them keep it. And at 11 o'clock at night, uh, about three weeks after I passed them out, uh, Ray Daniels from Brunswick Records, who's the vice president from Brunswick Records, called me at, my, at the apartment I was living in in Brooklyn. Do you have a record deal? No. Do you want one? Yes. Uh, can you be in my office tomorrow? He was with Brunswick Records. And I said, yes. I hung up the phone, G-Spot. Was, it was like you gave me a wedgie. I was screaming Mariah Carey notes. Ah! I did it! Ah! I mean, I, was, uh, just, I blew my lungs out doing that. And that was the start of it. And then from there, they pushed it. And uh, I became the opening act. Prince is doing I Want to Be Your Lover and Rick James is doing Mary Jane and it's, that's, the end of the, that's, that's the end of it. That's how it is. Did you get to meet Prince or Rick James? Oh, I did, yeah. I mean, I'm going, I'm coming off. Prince was coming on. He was just when he was wearing the, the, um, the, 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 uh, G string. G string. The G string. Or the, well, yeah, G string, right? Is that the what Leg warmers. Oh, thong. He's wearing a thong. <laughs> He's wearing a thong. And, and, uh, the girls love that. They loved that, but I traveled all over the United States with those guys, so that was the start of it. And then I made other songs and uh, Break for Love, and I produced other people and stuff like that. Because, like I said, I, I try to help people. Right now, I'm pushing Dimitri Reeves. He's the guy that did. He was singing the background. He did the 24K by Bruno Mars. Did you? I don't know if you saw him or not. Yeah, he can dance his ass off and he can sing. So that, he's an entertainer, and that's what it's about. He loves doing it. You know, I, I love playing, but you know, I'm not grinding every day like he is. Well, there you go, folks. There's a the song, The Million Seller, Bounce, Rock, Roll, Skate, Bounce, Rock, rock Skate, Right, Roll, roll bounce. bounce. Yeah, Vaughn Mason, give it up. Spot. Give it to him. <laughs> yeah. Stay tuned. We'll be right back at you.
Thank you. 